We are live. It's the normal thing. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to to security on the In30 network. We are this is episode 92. We are trying something new. We're not using Hangouts today. We're using something called blab.im. And actually, we're getting a lot of traction. So so let us know what you think. Uh, tweet us. Do whatever you need to do to get a hold of us. And apparently, people are watching. We have 11 viewers, and we go from there. So, this is the most live viewers we have ever had. I mean, we don't look cool with our lower third, but hey, I have a blue light and a microphone, right? And headphones. I mean, we have that. That that means some professionalism. I mean, at some level. Yeah. So, so a couple weeks ago, our topic today is Lifehacker put out an article. And by the way, if you don't follow Lifehacker, warning, it's a Gawker property. Lifehacker is awesome. It gives every time you say, how do I change a light bulb the next day? I promise you there will be an article on how to change that light bulb. So we were so we're looking for topics and bam, the next day, Lifehacker comes out with 10 things all computer users should know. And we look at this and we say, I don't think anybody knows this. I, I think outside of us and the people who listen to podcasts which is a self-referential thing because people who listen to podcasts know how to listen to podcasts, but no one else does. I don't think many people know how to do any of these things. Yeah, it's uh, it's easy for Lifehacker to, Lifehacker to throw out a listicle like this and say, hey, you know, there's 10 great things that'll keep you out of jail for your entire lifetime. Uh, and some of them might be easy to follow, like, wow, we just don't kill anyone. That's a pretty easy thing to follow. And some things are outlandish and no one outside of the Silicon Valley tech bubble would understand half of what's going on in the post. All Gawker properties tend to be a little bit biased towards, you know, the uh, people who know technology already, people who are getting involved in technology or, or are around that system. Um, it, uh, this kind of article, as we'll, we'll see as we get into it, actually kind of makes me a little bit sad because... I used to have a lot of respect for Lifehacker. Uh, I really, really liked that, uh, you know, the articles they were putting out, but they've really gone downhill. Um, so we'll cover some stuff and hopefully try to make sense of it to all the normal people out there. So number 10, I guess we go down, is set up a simple backup system. And they claim simple, <clears throat> but here we're going to say simple is not going to cut it anymore. So it says you should back up. And we haven't disagreed with the idea that you should back up. But they're telling you, oh, just turn on Windows Backup or Apple Time Machine and you're done. And no, you are way far from done. Yeah. So it, while that's a good start, when you know, you're talking to most normal people, uh, I've worked at a lot of different places. Uh, I've talked to a, a lot of different people, family members, friends. Uh, friends, family members, they think backing up is throwing things onto this, onto a tiny little flash drive. Oh, well, I'll just put all my tax documents on here. It's It'll be fine. I'll keep it sitting on top of the computer tower, and all of my important stuff is there in case the computer stops working for some weird reason. Okay, well, you've got multiple copies of documents, but those documents can walk away at any time someone wants to just grab that flash drive. Keeping important documents on a flash drive, probably not a great idea, uh, especially if you're not encrypting it, but you can't tell that to normal people, right? You say, here, I got you this Western digital hard drive. It'll sit next to the computer. You set up Windows backup or you set up Time Machine. It'll take care of the rest. Okay, that's, that's good. That's better. Uh, at least the system's taking care of it for you, but... Do you know things are getting backed up? Are you paying attention to the alerts? What if Windows is complaining that, hey, uh, your backup drive, it's running out of space. It's out of space. We can't make backups. And you set the thing to keep backups too long, so we're not going to delete any. What, what do you do then? Are, are you teaching people? Are, are you making sure yourself to pay attention to the notifications that your operating system is giving you? Uh, what happens if the house burns down? What happens if someone breaks in and rolls your desk away? Uh, there's there's a lot of things that don't really fall into the category of simple when it comes to backing well, we, up. We tell people, hey, look, um, we, we tell people back up, but you have to understand what you're backing up. You don't need to back up the system files. You don't have right. to back up certain uh, your 
it's a lot of different things because you can get it from other places. You're backing up the important files. And by the way, you could talk to Francis Ford Coppola. He left his hard drive on his external hard drive on top of his computer and the robbers just took everything and yeah. you're done. But are you verifying the health of the drive? Are you are you checking it periodically once a year to make sure that the backups are still there? Because if you haven't tested your backup, you don't really have a backup. Yeah. So my my backup program is really nice. Um, it's going to be a shot in the dark. If you're on Linux, because I am, um, there's a uh, backup program called Deja Dupe, which will be available in most major repositories. Um, every so often, it'll just say, hey, I'm going to check your backup. I'm going to verify everything. Uh, even after you just run a backup, it'll say, I'm verifying the integrity of the files which is great. And if it finds something broken, it'll try to redo the backup. If it keeps trying, it'll let you know, hey, something's wrong here. Um, most good backup programs will self-verify, uh, but you should really try to do it yourself every so often. Try to pull a file back from it. Most backup programs allow you to just cherry pick a file or two from the backup set, not dump the entire contents of the backup out to your hard drive. That would be ridiculous. You know, pick some pictures out, p take a couple songs, uh, you know, something with a little bit of weight. Maybe maybe if you've got, you know, some movies backed up, pull those off and see if they play right. Um, uh, there's there's a lot of good self-checking you can do. You just have to go through the manual effort. And the, the thing they talk about as almost as an afterthought is is online. So they talk about online, but they don't really talk about how necessarily to do it. They just say crash plan or uh, whatever, backblaze or any of the other ones, Mosey, and okay, so you gotta do that. They're not giving you directions, which those are really simple that you can follow, but they should really go in depth. They should right. go a lot deeper They and say Link exactly how to do it. And I think they do, but I mean, it's, it's I don't think backup is just this afterthought that people know about. No, no, the, the general, thing to keep in mind is it's three, two, one is a general rule. And I want to say that this week in tech really pioneered the three, two, one rule when it comes to backups, you need three copies of the data, one on your hard drive, one somewhere backed up locally, and then one somewhere not backed up locally. That could be a stack of CDs that you keep at your grandmother's house. That could be an external hard drive you ship to your brother's house once a month and you just trade drives. That could be something in the cloud like CrashPlan or Mosey or Carbonite that you back your files up to. Three copies, two different mediums, yep. one offsite. Yes. Okay. So in the worst case, the absolute worst case, your house burns down, I'll just go to your brother's house, take your hard drive, and now you have all of your family photos. You haven't lost anything, except for all the other stuff. Well, again, and I heard this the other day. I don't know how true it is, but Google Photos was losing some people's photo, not whole libraries, but individual photos. They were out a thousand photos or a hundred photos, but if you're out any sets of photos, it's not good. We're going to look more into it. Maybe that was just a scattered problem or some sort of server maintenance that they've now fixed. But again, remember, as you take pictures of everything, it's getting backed up. Turn on the backup on your phone to either Google Photos or if you use Dropbox or Apple Photos, whatever it is, you have a copy there. If you're buying music legally, you have the backups on those sites. That's I right. recommend I recommend buying from one store exclusively so you don't have to go to six different stores, but they're there too. And after you download them, then you can back those up or if you don't have enough space, you at least have it there. So let's if, move on. Okay. If, if you've got a Google account, you can take those MP3s that you just bought and sh store them in Google. Keep them there, and Google will let you actually pull down your entire music library uh, after the fact, which is really nice. So you can use that kind of as a backup. All right. Number nine is do everything faster with shortcuts. But this is not a security thing, so we'll save no. it for now. Number eight is protect yourself from viruses. And they're talking about how to use it. What's the difference between viruses and Trojans and everything else and what necessarily to do. And they talk about the different virus scans. The problem is we've talked about this many, many times in the show that the virus scan is not even a first resort. It's, it's the logic and the know-how that we've told you to be careful with. Because once you get a virus, you're not, 
you 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 what are you going to do? You're going to fix it's not going to fix it. It's just going to remove certain files off your system. Right. It, it, there's a general rule that I've I've had to follow in businesses I've worked at. Um, once the system is infected, you can't trust it. You literally cannot trust it anymore. You have to blow it up and start from square one. Uh, hopefully, you've maintained backups. Hopefully, you can pull off, you know, files that haven't been infected. Uh, but you have to be really careful after the fact. Uh, AV is not the first resort. Um, life hackers here, they're they're recommending a vast or bit defender. All right, um, I guess. Uh, ask anyone from uh, the InfoSec community, AV is simply not very effective, uh, and that's that's being pretty gracious. Um, the, the things that will protect you from viruses are using a better browser, Firefox, Chrome, stick with it, keep them updated, do your patches, patch everything all the time. If there's a software update, patch it. If it wants you to reboot, don't wait. Just do it. Get it over with. Um, get rid of Flash. Totally get rid of Java. If you're still running Java, why? Get rid of it. Uh, get rid of Adobe Reader. Uh, and, you know, I. this is controversial. I like to hawk it as a security thing because a lot of drive-by downloads happen this way. Use Adblock. You know, I like uBlock, but just about anything will do. Uh, just get rid of the ads. You're you're trying to block vectors of attack. So if somebody right. sends you something, you want to verify that they actually sent it to you. And I told you the story where <clears throat> somebody sent me something and I replied back what it was. And they told me, just download it, which is something my niece would say. But I caught them in a lie because my niece doesn't message on the Sabbath. And it was a Saturday. So she it clearly wasn't her. But they're getting more and more sophisticated to try and get you to download things. You just have to be smarter. Once it's on your system, you're never going to get rid of every little detail. So, and oh, by the way, Windows anti, uh, the Windows built-in programs, they're really good. They may not be the best, but the at the Patch Tuesday Microsoft uh, malicious removal tool, when you restart, does a big scan. And their security essentials is very good. Sadly, Security Essentials is, I, I, that used to be my go-to AV for any Windows machine I had around the house. Um, it has become less effective. Um, I think Microsoft got scared of antitrust, so they kind of let it falter a little bit. It's not bad. It's not awful or anything, but it's not as good as it once was. Uh, it's lost some, some effectiveness. Okay. Well, I've been I've been running a Mac now for years, so I I can't talk to specifically the new ones. Let's move on. This this ties in. This is number six. Keep your PC free of crap, as they call it. And they're saying just watch your programs, watch what people ask you to do. Mainly, when you install a new program, never ever go through the easy setup. Always click advanced because somebody's going to try and bury some sort of tool in there, some toolbar, some uh, a quick launch, some desktop icon that you just don't need. And we did a whole uh, whole episode, I don't know, six months ago, where what happens when you install the top 10 free programs from download.com? That was fantastic. It was just, this This was it. Basically, go through it. If you're not using a program, uninstall it. If it's built in natively to the computer, you know what? Use the native program. It's generally pretty good, and it works well. Yeah. Um, a one, one good thing you can do if, you, if you're setting up a new PC and you've got to install a lot of programs at once, uh, there's a great program called Ninite. Uh, you check the boxes, it'll give you a tiny download and it'll take care of the install for you. It'll make sure it has no crapware. Uh, Ninite is really fantastic for quickly bootstrapping machines. You can even keep the download around, double click it again, and it will update all of those programs automatically. Uh, it is such a time saver uh, and it makes sure you don't get the crapware which is great so and but if the first thing they say is and yes everyone should do this anytime you get a brand new computer go through it and and uninstall it here's the problem it's that you get these weird error messages the reason people don't do this is because they're afraid they get some windows service some weird dll file or something like that 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 messes up the machine. Are you sure you want to do this? 
Well, I thought I was. Now you're asking me, are you sure this may break other programs? Wait, it's going to break other programs? Then I'm going to forget what this is. This is not a simple idea. We all get it. We all know how to go there and go to different websites and research and everything else. But if you're giving this to somebody and you're saying, oh, oh, by the way, you go to MS Config and then you get UAC coming up saying, are you sure you want to do this? This may break things. It's scary. Yeah. Uh, most normal people are going to be really afraid uh, to uh, try to decrapify their machines. Um, I, I wish someone or a group of someone's or some open source project uh, would make you know a, a double click decrapification tool. Uh, the issue is it changes so often and it changes radically between manufacturers. Um, you know on these Lenovo's, you'll have to worry about this type of badware. On these Lenovo's, your data is actively being harvested by Superfish. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot to keep track of, but I, I really wish there were a double-click solution for normal humans out there to just get rid of all the badware on their machines. Uh, one thing you can do uh, is you can buy a machine without crapware. Uh, yeah, they're going to be more expensive. Yeah, you're going to have to find you know, one of the three Microsoft stores in existence, but they do sell Windows PCs with just Windows. Nothing else, no additions, no ads, no trialware, no advertisements, just strictly Windows. I mean, one of the things that should have been on this list is how to do a fresh install. If you're talking right. about what everyone should be able to do, I think a fresh install would would be perfect for this, but they they don't. I mean... And that's the problem. It's so hard to do just a regular fresh install. They that they don't give you the disk. You have to download it from their website or it's in their, their image, which, by the way, I do like. But it's still filled with the Dell toolbar that no one uses or the like Superfish with Lenovo. You just can't get a free thing. And I get it. They want to make money. They want to do this. So I understand the idea. But you know what? There should be – and it, most users should understand that this is what they're going to have to do. I'll give you an example. Um, Revo Uninstaller, which is my favorite thing to uninstall, is free if you go to that website, ninite.com, but to find the free version is not that easy. Once you find it, it does remove a lot of the stuff, and it does make it a, your one-button solution is is a little more than one, but it's still pretty good. Yeah. Okay, and then it says, so moving on from there, it was, and now I just lost it. Uh, access your home computer from anywhere. No, I was going to do maintenance, but okay. Access your home computer from anywhere. Yes. Uh, this, uh, this I have some issues recommending. Um, you know, their their big glowing icon on the picture here is TeamViewer. Uh, yes, I've used TeamViewer. Yes, I've set up TeamViewer. Yeah, uh, TeamViewer can be helpful. Uh, keep in mind. You are allowing access that you're using third party software from a company that you may or may not trust uh, to access your computers. I don't like the idea of that. I've used TeamViewer in the past, it's been very helpful. The software works well. Um, but it, it's definitely, you know, not on the top 10 most secure things I've ever done with my machine. Uh, if you have the means, if you have the, the time to sit down and do it correctly, um, set up a home VPN, set up remote desktop in the correct way. Don't just port forward to remote desktop. That's how you get people owning your machine. Um, you know, but you set up uh, an open VPN with a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, it's yeah. not the easiest thing to do, but it's doable, right? Well, what I was going to say, yeah, it took me, look, it took me three tries, but at the end of the day, and I think they've edited the documents, so the three tries will maybe take you down to one, and it'll take a little more than an hour, but it was good. You have to ask yourself, what is, why are you using this remote desktop? And for different people, it's different reasons. What, their example is you left files on your computer. Well, and they say... Instead, maybe you should use a file syncing service like Dropbox or whatever it is. The other thing you're using it for is it's either files or VPNing. You're trying to get traffic. You're trying to to use your home computer to send the traffic, which is what I use it for. So both of those are native. I mean, you, you can build your VPN and do it that way. Or Windows has Windows Desktop, 
And Apple has Apple Remote Desktop. And even Chrome, if you want to trust in Chrome, has Chrome Remote Desktop. So there are other ways. If you want to install TeamViewer, you want to install uh, all the other VNCs. But again, now you're trusting it to, to, to a third party that you may not be okay with. Uh, frankly, when it comes down to all the choices, you know, the, the first choice uh, would be, you know, do what we've done, set up OpenVPN, uh, follow a guide online, use your operating system's built-in tools. Uh, if it comes down to choosing between TeamViewer and something else, I would much rather, and I, I might be alone in this, I know this is not a very popular opinion, but I would much rather trust, you know, Google's Chrome remote desktop uh, than I would trust TeamViewer. And frankly, Chrome Remote Desktop is easier to set up. It's, and, and look, we've talked about it for what reasons? People have different reasons to do different things. You have to ask yourself. The problem with TeamViewer is that it's an expensive piece of software that you get free, but they nag you. And if you're okay right. with the nagging, it, it works. But again, you're installing something. And look, TeamViewer has an online uh, thing. But the other thing is you're leaving your computer on all day to have access to it, which is... Most people nowadays leave their computers on all day. But you know what? If you're taking a laptop, I think you should find another way. If you're looking to get files off, you should put everything in a Dropbox. Put Set up your own, own cloud installation. There are other ways. And again, this is a security podcast. This is not a, the simple way to do it. But I think remote desktop for most people is not the right answer. Because i much rather help somebody say, if you're going to write a file, you're going to write your book report, your term paper, throw it in Dropbox. Dropbox or will sync it to the cloud, same with Google Drive. Setting up some sort of remote desktop is another vector for someone to get infected that then you're going to get another call on how to stop it. Right. Especially if, you know, for some reason they've decided, oh, well, I'll just make this easy. I'll just set up Windows remote desktop and port forwarded to the firewall. I've seen people do that. I've seen people expose remote desktop on their home machine to the wild of the internet. Uh, that's ludicrous. Do not do that. Uh, if you're in a company where you know, you're know you logging into your servers through IPs, through public IPs where remote desktop is exposed, dude, what are you doing? Do not do that. Put it behind some kind of VPN, uh, but I've seen it. You know, uh, people people say that's crazy. No one would do that, but I've been there. The 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 next one is keep your computer in tip top shape with regular maintenance. Again, we talk about this. We talk <clears> about <throat> it with viruses. Do all these things. The problem is you got to remember to do these things, and right. yes, you have to do it. And it's not that easy. You have your laundry list of things that you have to do every Friday night, and and it goes here is the, and look, Life Hacker is giving guides, so at least. They're going to show you how to do it, but it's we, we talk about it. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good thing to do. But the average person is not going to do it, and they should know right. how to do it. But it's going to be one of those things they're going to put off. They're going to put off. They're going to put off. And frankly, after a year or two, if you do your backups correctly, you might as well just freshly reload and be done with it. Yeah, I, uh, Windows uh, starting with. Windows 7, uh, Windows machines in particular, really keep themselves fairly clean. Uh, unless you're installing and uninstalling and changing a bunch of stuff and modding system files and doing a bunch of crazy weird stuff, uh, Windows 7 keeps itself relatively stable for, compared to XP, you know, incredible amounts of time. Uh, same with 8, 8.1, 10. Um, they all, you know, regularly defrag themselves. That's something you do not have to do anymore. Uh, if, unless you've explicitly turned it off, automatic updates just happen. It even reboots itself if you leave it alone for too long, which some people don't like, but it's there for a reason. Um, they are making it easy, and you yeah. know what? You should be in this process every day of saying, what files don't I need? What can I consolidate? Let's yeah. get rid of Let's get rid of things, because again, decluttering your life also makes you as an individual more efficient and easier to operate and be around and less grumpy and everything else. It's way easier to do a bunch of small things every day or just, you know, one or two small things than it is to do the spring cleaning every year. So, I mean, for me, it's just easier to, 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 to blow everything out and just start fresh because everything's backed up. It's one or two <clears throat> buttons and you go from there. Right. Okay. Number two, 
or number three, instantly share a file between computers. Yes, everyone needs to know how to do this, how to move two files from a computer. We don't care how you know how you do it. I mean, we do care on some level, but being able to, I need to get this file to my work computer, to my phone, to something. Everyone should be able to, needs to know how to do. The problem is it's not that easy. Right. Uh, if everything's running Windows 7 or above, uh, their home groups feature is actually really good and pretty easy to set up. Uh, in the absolute worst case, use a flash drive, use an SD card, use some type of you know portable storage, throw the file on it, take it over. Um, if, if you're setting up file shares by hand, as long as you're not exposing them to the internet, there's some damage you could do on your home network, but uh, you know nothing utterly catastrophic unless something gets into your home network. Uh, remember, it's not about one security feature that will keep you safe forever. It's about doing a lot of things. So I'd recommend if, if you have the means, set up home groups. It's fairly easy. Um, other than that, flash drives aren't a terrible option, and neither is Dropbox or Own Cloud or Spider Oak or whatever you choose to use. Obviously, we're going to say you want to make sure everything is secure that you're transferring, but if you're just trying to, to move one <clears throat> file to the other, you, sometimes you just need to get it done, so you do it. Just I think at this point, everyone knows how to compress and uncompress files. I think in all the operating systems, it's very simple. And if somebody gets a zip file, they know exactly what to do, which at least is a good thing. What yeah. I will say is, please, whatever you do, unless you are absolutely desperate, do not email large files. Yeah, I, I've known people that email themselves documents. Um, it's not awful. It's not a bad, bad thing to do. Um, but... You know, uh, emailing someone a uh, file that's sitting right next to you when you've got a flash drive sitting between both of you, you're cluttering up not only your sent folder, you're cluttering up their inbox. There's a lot of cruft that you have to take care of after the fact. It's not the cleanest solution. It does work, though. I mean, remember, if you're using Outlook, your PST file has to load, and that could be gigs and gigs and gigs. If you're constantly uploading 5 meg files, 10 meg files, from there. So if you can find another way, please do it. But people email email is not file sharing. It's it's yes, it's here and there really quick, but at the end of the day, find another way. Yeah. Number two, easily find your lost or stolen gadgets. We've talked about this. People need to remember that that this is important. When you get a new device, most of the new phones, both platforms or all the platforms, have a way or ha there's an app there that will let you install it to be able to find it when it's lost. And I think that's, if everyone knew how to use Find My iPhone or Find My Mac or on Android, Android Device Manager, both are native, both are written by the companies, we would have a lot less, not thefts, but lost phones. Yeah. Uh, find My iPhone, great tool, absolutely fantastic. Android Device Manager is awesome. Uh, I cannot believe that Google took so long getting this feature out of the gate. Uh, it is just fantastic. It'll show you where your phone is. You can erase it. You can ring the device. Um, uh, you can even, you know, turn on GPS to watch the thing on a map. Like, it is really powerful. Uh, and it's, it's going to work everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Unless you're running a custom ROM without the Google software and it's not hooked to any Google account, it will just work anywhere. If it's hooked to a Google account, you can use the Android device manager. Well, I, I was talking about this in class. I mean, school just started for me. And a kid came to me after, right before, right when we stopped <clears throat> logging off, he goes, hey, can I run to the auditorium? I lost my phone. I go, how did you know? He goes, I, ha I forgot about Android Device Manager. You told me. I found it, and I went there. I just saved this child, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars from getting a new phone. That's fantastic. So right there, it worked. And setting it up is super important. But again, it's not – you have to remember to do it. And people don't forget it, or they want to do it later or anything else. And we've talked about this. The, the people want to turn something on, and they want it to work. They want the defaults to be there. 
and they don't want to do anything other than that. Yes, you have to install these things. You have to tell Apple, yes, find my iPhone. Because what they're doing is, correct me because I'm going to say this wrong. It's not spyware, but you're allowing them access to do these things, which if you want to be really secure about, you shouldn't do it. Yeah, if an, on an iPhone you have very little choice unless you jailbreak the device. Uh, on most Android phones you have very little fo- choice unless you load a custom ROM. Um, but yeah, if if you don't want Google or Apple to have that information, you need to take control of your software. You need to run Android without being hooked to a Google account in any way, or or at least not having the Google Apps bundle installed. Um, uh, there's there's ways to stop it if you feel uncomfortable with it. I like the convenience, I like the feature set, and I'm willing to take the trade-off. And absolutely am I. Because again, at the other day, you can vote it. You can you can wipe it, you can do everything, and and it's there. If you're really unsure, if you have a work account and you're using Exchange, actually I think the company has at least the ability to wipe your phone. They may not yes. be able to locate it, but if you, which is a good and bad thing because again, they can then wipe your phone and they have access to it. But yeah. we can go from there. And then, and I, I would have, you want to say the last word? Yeah. Uh, uh, number one, uh, which, you know, 10 simple things that every computer user should know. Come on, guys. All you have to do is just keep your personal information safe and secure. How hard is that? Come on. It's and, so easy. Yeah. And we've done 92 shows on exactly that. And we're still going. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's it's not that easy. They they do say, you know, the usual, hey, use strong passwords and don't use metadata in photos. Really? That's your big thing? Uh, and never use open Wi-Fi. Okay. All right. And see our checklist. No, I don't want more links to more Gawker sites. Look, there's there's a lot of things you can do to keep yourself safe online, offline, uh, and you're not going to find it in... Uh, a simple checklist. You're you're not going to find it in, you know, a, a BuzzFeed article or, or a Lifehacker article. There's a lot of good things you can do, uh, but it will involve changing the way you use your devices. It's going to take some work from you. And to get those tips, you should continue watching our shows. Absolutely. I, I See, that's say, look, that's the pitch. Tom, Tom, look, Tom is anti anti the Gawker sites, which I'm not opposed to. Lifehacker, <laughs> I do like. They do put out a lot of good stuff, but something like this, it's it's just tip of the iceberg. They're telling you how to do things, but they're not going in depth. And yes, they're giving links, and you can care. But at some point, clicking through and clicking through and clicking through something that should be stated a little more than a hundred words each is not going to get you too far and it may actually cause more harm because you're going to think you're going to be secure. Right. So with that said, we're going to end and we will then see you next week. So see you guys. Bye everyone. Stop.